You're listening to 102.7 Chop FM, and this is Arts Talk. Good evening, you're listening to 102.7 Chop FM, and this is Arts Talk. I'm Dave Peters. I'm Taylor Koss. And this show is dedicated to bringing the arts to Newmarket. Oh, yes. Not just the musical arts, mm. although we have lots of musical artists, but any artists practicing any discipline, both amateur and professional. And we'd like you to appear on this show. So if you're in the arts and want to come on Arts Talk, there are several ways you can contact us. You can send an email to newmarketartscouncil at gmail.com or or you can look us up on Facebook search Arts Talk Radio message us there or make sure you or please make sure I don't know how to say that anyways never mind sorry (laughs) failed okay YouTube check us out on YouTube we have all of our previous shows it's our past catalog check it out and message us us there if you want to if that's what you're trying to say check us out on YouTube hear how fun it is to be here Send us a communication. Exactly. Come on the show. Exactly. And Thank don't forget you. to tune in every night at 6 o'clock. Every, not every night. Every Wednesday night at 6 o'clock <laughs> to hear good music and to find out what's going on in the arts in Newmarket. And I'm sorry, we're a little late starting tonight. Uh, so if you tuned in at 6, I apologize for that. Our guest tonight is Rob Johannes of the band Paint. Rob, welcome. Woo! Good to be here. Thanks <laughs> for being here. See, I was trying to go for the dramatic pause there. Oh. Very nice. The effect. Very nice. Yeah. Wasn't Thanks. sure. Thought maybe you were yes. <laughs> I'm Rob <laughs> Johannes. <laughs> Perfect. I, I have this feeling you're mocking me, but I'm no, just going to No, it's let loving. Lie. Like, it's, it's adorable. It's not you're human. adorable. Not, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> you're welcome, man. <laughs> Rob, all the way from Toronto. Yes. Yes, so By far. way of Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, so, Rob, let's start, let's start with you and uh, your history as a musician. We're always interested in finding out a little bit about mm-hmm. when you started and why you started. Was there music in your household when you were little? When did you first start to, to f- discover music? There was not music in my household, really. Um, but as a first generation, um, my entire family is from, from India. The whole tree goes back and back and back, like purebred. Is it uh, in Punjab? Punjab. Okay, in the yeah. Punjab. Okay. And um, I was the first person in the entire family to be born outside of India. No kidding. So you're a noteworthy Johannes. Then. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that name came up, came around later. <laughs> it but it's all about Indian. Yeah, I know. Everyone's <laughs> like, "Are you Swedish?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. I don't right. think there's a lot of brown-skinned, <laughs> black-haired Swedes, but you know, maybe there is. I'm well, not sure. Black Irish, right? Um, <laughs> um, so I, I sort of ended up. Uh, I mean, it, Kelowna, BC, was where I was born. And that's the the city where, you know, Stockwell Day was the MP for his whole career. Um, very white bread. You know, we were the only family the that was non white in the whole in the really? whole city. So, you know, you show up at school and everyone's calling you Hindu and I'm like, actually my parents are Sikh, but well my mom's Hindu and I so I, you know, you, you confusing. Yeah. So you learn a lot about race relations really early mm. and you also kind of um, learn a lot about isolation uh and you learn about subcultures you know so i really gravitated towards kind of like the weird punk kids who were into the ramones (laughs) (laughs) we (laughs) We were talking about before you know the the ramones the smiths or you know like that that whole scene the smiths Smiths we love okay but it's a shame Mm -hmm. you were influenced so early by the ramones but anyway Uh, but there were so many others too you know of course i'm just kidding (laughs) so you found we're not kidding okay you found some common some common ground yeah. Back in well, the there was there was just an open door. Like they 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 accepted me. It's like if you kind of have been pushed away from that popular or generic or what not generic, but they are generic mm-hmm. crowd. You kind of do flock to people that are a little bit on the outside, no matter yeah. what is pushing them to mm-hmm. you know. As an okay. And they were quirk. They're very quirky and very interesting, and they, and they they would seek out. You know what kind of music or films that other people mm. weren't consuming. And then I remember being being really young and and seeing the band Living Color oh, they came were out, yeah. and I was used to seeing, you know, good looking white men 
on TV yeah. singing songs. Mm -hmm. And when they came out, it was like they were all black and they rocked they and they were political. So guys, they played yeah. better than everybody. They sang better than everybody. Um, they had a conscience. They had a message. Um, and that really resonated with, with me, just given where I was coming from, sort of being really disenfranchised. And... This would be your early teens, Rob? Um, this would be just before that, you know, even even the a little bit. Teens, 12, yeah. 11, yeah, 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 around that time. Years, yeah, right? oh yeah. So, so that kind of um, made me pick up an instrument at first, and I started playing bass and uh, just met, like, punk bands and started kind of playing with them. So I got to experience a lot of things that most people very young don't get to. Mm -hmm. uh, so I got a lot of that stuff out of my system very young. So that was fun. Um, were you trying to play what you were hearing by, say, Living Color or other bands at that time? Or <laughs> at that time? Well, see, it's funny because, I mean, at the same time, it's like, you know, Nirvana was out and everyone's like, yeah, like they made me. It's, it's kind of like, you know, we're the Beatles. Like everyone loved them, but you could never achieve their level of technical skill. Right. Whereas the Stones, it was like, yes, you love them, but, ooh, I can do this, mm -hmm. you know. So... For me, it was funny because Living Color was like, I mean, so influential to me, but at the same time, it's like they're virtuosos at their yeah, instruments. Yeah, so that's where the kind of punk rock edge kind of appealed to me, that it made it more accessible. Like this was a medium that you could use to communicate a message. And it was it was more about what you had to say um, and how you were saying it almost in a way. I don't know uh, who said this. Mm -hmm. Three chords and the Three truth. Three chords and the truth. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know who, who said, said that? that? You know who coined that? Dave always it's said such that. Such a great, such a great. I want to say it wasn't Pete Seeger. I almost feel like it might have been Woody Guthrie. Yeah, yeah. It was one. It was one of those guys. I think. I'm gonna Google it during a song, and we're gonna come back. And yeah, we should find that out on the break. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Good idea. If I remember, I'll tell you. So mm -hmm. you're learning to play the bass. Yeah, I was playing bass. I mean, I I always. It's it's funny because I think Bono said it. He's like, you don't become a singer unless you're lacking some serious validation that your parents probably never gave you. <laughs> and um, and for me, that's uh, that's, like that. that's that's that, that's very true. <laughs> you just oh, but the, so that may be your motivation for starting it in the first place. And you know, actors is kind of the same way. I tend to relate more with you know actors often than I do with with musicians. You're pretty theatrical in your performances, so I can totally see. Yeah. That. Like, if anyone has seen Paint, they'll know what I'm talking about. It's not a standstill and deliver kind. No, of thing. no. it's very it's not, entertaining. On emotion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, it's a very physical performance. So you so. found early that singing was something you wanted to do as well, not just playing the bass. Yes. Well, it was, there was something just so direct about it. Um, I, I pursued other arts forms as well, like painting, film. I even went to film school for a while. But I just found there was an immediacy about singing that it's it's coming right from you mm -hmm. you know you can be kind of sick and not feeling so well and you can still play your instrument but right. you know you physically have to be totally there mm -hmm. and um disciplined you know to to sing um and just to channel that so there and and there's something about the voice that that for me was very very powerful um you I've know i've said this too that mm -hmm. the ba bass player misses a note drummer misses a beat no one really notices it's Sing, the singer to, playing ones, yeah. you, you hit a <laughs> the singer, everyone notices. I mean, yeah. you're so emotionally no exposed, mm -hmm. but you're also technically exposed too, right? Yeah. And like yeah. kind of the center, not like not the center point, but a lot of people, especially people I think that aren't musicians, tend to focus on singers just because that's the most direct, like yeah, you're saying, well, direct right. message or whatever, right? It's the center stage sort of thing, mm -hmm. so right. yeah. So at a young age, you're learning to play the bass and sing. Taking lessons at that time? Um, I didn't take them for quite a while because it wasn't cool. <laughs> I think it's the Ramones cool. epic. Right? Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't cool at the time. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, we we had talked about this just before the show. But it's like you know, Tom Waits would say that if you mastered your instrument, everything would have to resolve itself. And it would go places that were predictable. Um, so if you didn't know what you were doing, you would end up creating things that were more original and more mm, unique than what true. conventional, um, you know, wisdom would would have you yeah. do. Thank so you I was, I was. What's that? <laughs> so thank you, Tom. Wait. Yes, <laughs> but I. So I was kind of reluctant to take lessons, um, just because I didn't want to be molded into a certain way. I almost wanted to develop a personality first, and then. Mm -hmm get some training. So I did train with a vocal coach in Vancouver named Spencer Welch. And to this day, I still do his warm-up routine you? for, for, for how, an how hour. How old were you when, you when you hired him? Oh, I mean, I was, I was in my, like, 
I was in my late teens, twenties by the time I started training with him. When, so when I had it been struck s- you that uh, some learning some fundamentals that technical uh, training would be useful to you. Well, it's because when you, when you're singing, you know, twenty seven nights out of thirty, you just you need to preserve your voice. Yeah. So yeah. you know, you can develop bad habits the same yeah. way you can develop bad habits on a bass, not using your pinky finger or yeah. something. That's mm-hmm. a bad habit. If you're not, mm-hmm. if you're singing through your throat, mm-hmm. and you should be singing through your diaphragm or yeah. something. Yeah, and practicing breathing. doesn't help, right? Because if you're practicing wrong things, yeah. practice doesn't Absolutely. make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So if you're yes. mm-hmm. practicing That's something wrong, yeah. you're yeah. just going to permanently do it wrong. Seriously, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Huh? So it's yeah. good, too. Mm-hmm. Very vocal nice. Lessons. I want to take vocal lessons. I've never done it, but I really... I think it would benefit anyone who takes their craft and their talent seriously, right? Yeah, and there's, there's a certain... Again, it just allows you to connect to connect those bridges in your voice where things are breaking you just, you want to push it up to that space and get there, but you can't. And, um, I'm kind of known for having my voice tends to actually fall more in like a female singer's range. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, I owe the training to that because cool. that's kind of allowed me to sort of bridge between the head and the chest and, mm. and, and to get up there. Awesome. So it's fun. I'm proud to say I sing like a girl <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> you should, uh, you, you I should be. Great. You should uh, be. You should be. Yeah. We're talking to Rob mm-hmm. Johannes of the band Paint on 102.7 Chop, chop. FM. Chop, chop, chop. This, chop. Is, this is Art Stock. I'm Taylor Koss. I'm Dave Peters. So um, <laughs> were you in a well-established band by this point now? Or t- we're into your 20s? Well, yeah, by that point I was. I mean... Growing up... And was it your band, Rob? Were you the songwriter by that point? No, not at that point. I was writing songs, but I wasn't really fronting the band yet. I was sort of playing in other people's bands. Um, And you sort of had, again, the sense of immediacy because I was between East Vancouver, which is like the open drug scene capital of the world, and Surrey, BC, which is the Indo-Canadian gang violence capital of the world. So you really had two options. You could join a band or you could join a gang. You know, And, (laughs) and I... I didn't want to get killed, so <laughs> I. And you can only get into so many fights before you have to learn how to talk your way out of situations and right. and and use your words and your intellect to, to to get out of, you know, risk. So, is I didn't. Better now, because yeah, really I haven't vibrant. been there in, fifteen years at this mm-hmm. point, so you know, even to visit. Yeah, I mean, there was, not to get on the whole political thing, but for me, like, I don't, I don't see much of a difference between music and politics. They're all part of the thing. But there was, there was some serious neglect that was going on in the community. I mean, if you had, you know, the suburbs and, and two white kids saw each other, you know, there would have been a task force immediately for the RCMP. This went on for, you know, a decade and a half before it was taken seriously. Mm-hmm. So you have this feeling of, like, you're disposable. You know, mm-hmm. you don't matter so much. And through music and through the arts, really, it allowed you to find to find empowerment, you know, to, to find your voice. It wasn't just a matter of, oh, this is something I'm interested in. It's kind of like this is life or death. Like, this is what's keeping me here. This is what's allowing me to find myself and mm-hmm. to be part of something greater. So I've always had very grand expectations around what music can do because I experienced that growing up. And I thought, well, if that's what I'm used to music being, um, and also came into a time when it's like, you know, Nirvana and Pearl Jam and all these bands who were being played on mainstream radio. And I thought at the time that that's what you should expect from mainstream radio. And I didn't realize that was kind of the exception to the rule. So sad that that's that not how sad. it normally is. <laughs> but then but then you also got this window into, ooh, radio can be this. And mainstream can embrace that. So in terms of forming paint, it just became based on this premise of it can go as big as it possibly can go. Now, that's harder these days with the internet and everything like that. But um, the point is you don't wait I think until you're there to put on the show that you want to put on, you can you build it, you, yeah. know, you build it and they will come, sort of thing. The, the field of dreams though. idea. And sure bands like the Stones or I don't know who it was, but said like play that way. Like it doesn't matter if you're playing to two people or two thousand or two hundred thousand, play play to your fullest extent, right? Yeah, and that, yeah. that this, I, this idea of the mission though, or some some driving force, is something we find that uh, people have in common. Um, um, Johnny No Cash yep. last week is another mm-hmm. example of he talked in very yeah. similar terms, an entirely different 
take, but in the the principle at the heart of the thing is yeah. exactly the same. Uh, I've got something to say. This is a vehicle for me to say mm -hmm. it, and mm -hmm. really, uh, uh, it's not that I don't care what people think of it, but I'm not crafting it for acceptance. That's not really why. It's, yeah. That's not why it's being made, right? Absolutely. So yeah. you're in your twenties. Mm -hmm. You're more or less a bass player and singer for hire at that time. Yeah, I was doing a lot of bass stuff for hire. Um, playing with a bunch of different bands, touring, doing the grind across the prairies. and uh, I mean, I had lived back and forth between Toronto and Vancouver anyways, and it just became clear that it was, as a matter of practicality, it was, it was difficult to be able to stay out west. Simply because, you know, you drop a pin in Toronto and you do an eight-hour radius, you can hit 25 different cities. If you include going to the States, you can play in New York, sure. you can play Montreal, you can play wherever. Um, you know, Chicago and even just, you know, places that you can, you can play 200 shows a year and sleep in your own bed most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's something very appealing about being able to be a busy, active touring band, but still being able to be part of a community at home and have relationships and have a dog and, you know, just, yeah. you know, be able to stay yeah. healthy and something grab or something. Yeah. Much, right? to, just to kind of help you to stay, you know. To feel human like i mean i i had times where i would come home from stretches of tour and then there'd be a dinner at a friend's place and and i would show up at the door and i'd knock and they'd say hi and i'd be like so should we load in through the front or the back <laughs> and they're like what did you just say i'm like oh wait yeah. hey how are you good to see you nice to be at your house it's like you just get stuck in this routine yeah, and um <laughs> yeah so it's so it's nice to be able to to you know, go out for three days, stay home for four, go out for five days, come home for two. And and uh, it just keeps you a lot more grounded. Whereas out west, like to tour, your your first tour stop in Vancouver is like a 10-hour drive away. Wow. And and that That's grind awesome. through the prairies is, um, it's very thankless. So crazy. You know, it's, <laughs> I've, done, I've done it enough to know that, like, it, it, it'll probably be a long time before we do it again unless the stakes are higher and maybe we're supporting a larger mm -hmm. band and there's more of a, a budget behind it and such. But, um, I remember one of the first times I did it, I, uh, <laughs> what is going on Ooh. outside? Just so our listeners know, there's a revolution. Okay. Yeah, everything's okay. okay inside. Everything's <laughs> okay here at Artstock. Outside, there might be a revolution. Elsewhere on the campus things. Jesus, Pickering College, what's going on? What the heck? Okay. Well, uh, maybe we, this is the time to listen yeah, to some Yeah, I was just thing. singing the same thing. Listen to some paint. So we're going to start with When She's Gone. Is there anything we need to know about When She's Gone, Rob? Um, when She's Gone was the first track off of our EP that came out last year called Based on Truth and Lies, which was the soundtrack to an hour-long film called 1111. Beautiful. Yeah. This is Paint with When She's Gone on 102.7 Chop FM.
When She's Gone by Paint on 102.7 Chop FM. This is Arts Talk. I'm Dave Peters. I'm Taylor Koss. And we are in conversation with Rob Johannes from Paint. Rob, that was recorded last year? No, that was recorded in 2014. And at, released last year? Yes, it came out last year. And that yeah. was the first release by Paint. No, we no. were actually talking about this. They, they've been no, around. They've been around? They've done lots Let's of talk yeah. about the history of Paint. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you tell us who's in Paint and give us the history of Paint. Yeah, um, well, there's Devin Janetta, who's the drummer. Uh, Jordan Shepardson is the guitar player. Um, Keiko Gutierrez is the bass player. And... I hang out with the band. <laughs> oh, that's that makes that's what the we singers do. Lyrics, yeah. <laughs> no, no uh, instrumental contribution from you at all. Um, I do play guitar on a couple of songs here and there, and a lot of the um, the backing tracks and orchestration and arrangements. How about uh, the, I do? The, sorry, the. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you write the songs originally? Like, do you write your guitar chords or the general idea? Yeah. Um, it varies. Uh, I'd say the key songwriters in the band are probably Jordan and I. Um, how songs work with us is either I'll write them and bring them in and everyone will sort of come up with their parts, or Jordan and I will write them together. Um, but then even sometimes we'll be sitting there in a rehearsal and just messing around nice. and something yeah. will come up. Like uh, We have one song called It's Over and Over that's on the, the new live album and uh, our drummer uh did like a a vine you know those little six second videos oh, yeah, that you post yeah, yeah. on on online and it was just him playing this very cool like slow driving kind of drum groove and jordan and i saw it and we're like wow that's awesome yeah. so i just kind of programmed that loop into the uh, the computer and um we just built a song around it so it's yeah there's there's never a, a real set formula for for that but i'm finding more and more now songs are starting with the melody they used to always start with the chords and the melodies would come on to that, but um, I'm putting the instrument down a lot more and using my voice more as the instrument. Mm-hmm. So a lot of it is um, melodies come to me when I'm walking. Like, for example, the song that just played when she's gone, I was walking down Young Street in uh, Toronto between you know, Wellesley and College, walking southbound, and uh, the melody and the, and the bass line just kind of came to me. Uh, when I was walking, nice. so I just had to pull. I just had you. to pull over on the sidewalk and uh, hum, hum it into the voice note, <laughs> yeah. and then email it out immediately because you don't want to have like the Kirk Hammett thing where you have 800 riffs on your phone oh. and you lose it. So yes, always send it somewhere else because now that I'm not using a tape recorder, I use uh, the phone. But right. yeah, you don't you don't want to lose it. Oh. Yeah. And is that uh, typical <laughs> in the melody before lyrics? Even when you like over the time you've been writing? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I th- because. It's, again, it's that thing of immediacy, that the melody is is the hook. That that's what opens the door, and the lyrics is what keeps people in the house. Mm-hmm. I mean, for lack of a <laughs> of a more creative um, analogy. Um, well, it's what people can relate to, right? Like they, it makes it part of their own. People perceive the lyrics completely different, whereas you're you're hearing. Well, people perceive music differently too. Yeah. But lyrics, especially, can be like brought into your own personal world right sure and I, yeah. I mean some people do go to lyric I love lyrics I, I feel like you and I are very different with this. they think of it as the poetry yeah but there, yeah. Are, there are tunes that I've loved for years and I don't know what the lyrics are that's crazy to me and and, or, and you'll, you know mm-hmm. I, you make up you fill in your own mind what you think the lyric might be yeah and when you learn what the li- yeah. real lyric is you're, you're kind of disappointed sometimes you're like I like my line better <laughs> <laughs> I thought Hendrix was saying excuse me while I kiss this guy <laughs> Piece that, yeah, uh, has been together how long? This lineup's well. Keiko joined us last. Um, she has been in about two and a half years, but the other three of us have been together for about five years at this point. And then prior to that, um, it actually started just before I left Vancouver um, permanently, and it was a trio of us. And then we just borrowed friends to play bass. It was myself, Matt, and Paula, and that's where the first record, "Can You Hear Me," was a product of that lineup, and. I came to Toronto with their blessing um, just to sort of see what would happen. I mean, we were all at different places in terms of our ability to just pick up and move. Mm-hmm. Um, my life kind of opened up, and um, and that wasn't quite the case. But but I didn't want to leave that unit behind because it was a very, very special unit. And we still keep in touch, actually, and we still write together. Mm-hmm. Um, even some of the newer songs were written by, you know, That's co-written awesome. with the old bandmates. So. So they're so still part special. of the family. Like, um, there's one song coming up called Bonfire Vanities, and Paula and I hadn't seen each other in 
four years and she came to Toronto and we just hung out for an afternoon and just sat down and bashed the song out in a couple was she hours. Was a bass player? She was a guitarist. Okay. Yeah, she, she had a couple female bass players. Just wondering if that was like a, a constant trend or not. In no, music, it or just lineups. sort of happened that way. We had a, a big long period there, like two and a bit years where we didn't have a permanent bass player. Mm-hmm. So we were just borrowing friends, <laughs> continuing to tour and play so much. And that was... There was a lot of anxiety involved with that because you just, you never knew how things were going to go. I mean, everybody was really reliable as a musician. We, it was people that we, we invited them because we knew we could trust them. Mm-hmm. But it's also, there's just that unpredictability factor. You want to be able to put on a consistent show everywhere you go. And, and, uh, Consistent's a good word because mm-hmm. if you have different bass players, that kind of lacks the yeah, consistency. Yeah. Different well, styles. Different and Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's not just a consistency in the... In the musicians, it's in the it's in the presentation. Yeah, it's in yeah. the visual as yeah. well, um, because oftentimes people won't remember what your songs sound like when they only you know see you once in the club. But if they walk in and they see the stage, you know they're like, oh, I've seen this mm-hmm. before as well. So we mm-hmm. put a lot of emphasis into the visual and the backdrop and having video loops going. It's a very that's what makes Ooh. music such a wonderful art form. Is it's it's it it hits all your senses. Yeah. You know, it's it's about what you see and 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 what you hear and um, it's it's, it's the total experience. Visual. Yeah, and it's nice to put all that like wasted, you know, fine arts True. schooling to, yeah. to work. Oh, yeah. You know, to, yeah. <laughs> so to just even just to create, you know, visual backdrops and video content yeah. um, that that plays while we're performing and that it becomes this. We're very regimented in in the songs, you know, like there's space to move within them, but they're always kind of, you know, how long they are, you know. Um, But there's a certain interaction that happens when you have video elements going on behind you. It's like the Velvet Underground would have that where they'd have Andy Warhol's projections going Mm -hmm. on behind them. And you never knew how those were going to line up together. Um, sometimes it would be a train wreck, and some, but sometimes it would it would all come together it's art, by chance. Though. It really is a new well, like, form of art if you yeah. mix the two together, right? It kind of makes it like it's another member of the band in a way mm. because we do play with like backing tracks and clicks and everything, and it's you know some musicians are very like snooty about that, but we're just kind of like. The Who played the backing tracks. Like, did you see them play, you know, Bob O'Reilly? Like, <laughs> Keith Moon had headphones taped to his head, and they were playing to a loop. And they're, like, almost as punk as you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like when you allow it to just become another member of the band. And it's how you interact with it. And it almost allows the human elements of the music to come out even more when you have these electronic elements that are kind of static. And, like, yeah, and then the way that they all interact together, especially with, with visuals and everything, it, it almost adds a jazz element to it in a way which is very spontaneous and very fun mm. so it's uh yeah and That's plus cool. the band just always has to be on their toes in terms of they never know where i'm gonna climb or where i'm gonna fling my microphone i can't wait to see you <laughs> perform <laughs> especially the climbing part That's yeah dangerous. your next show well, is barry right yes it's so barry on any of our barry listeners which we mm-hmm. have some I we think. have some barry listeners mm-hmm. Make sure you go to the Fox Lounge this Saturday. Paint and a, a what is it? Primitive a Evolution. A Primitive Evolution. They're we'll fantastic. Be playing. And it's also yeah. Shane Heath's birthday, who is the owner of the Fox Lounge. Fun. Which Probably is great. Free cocktails for people and stuff like that. I'm well, like, yeah, it's his birthday. It's a party. Yeah. <laughs> so paint and Primitive Evolution. And you'll get yeah. to see this in it, action. Is yeah. this Fox uh, show the um, a part of a tour? Or was just a one-off? Yeah, well, we're basically doing a series of shows over the course of the fall in support of our new album uh which is called display and it's also a concert film um so it's it's both it's a live album and a concert film packaged together as one so if you live far away and you and we don't get to tour through your city uh i apologize first of all um but there is now a concert film that documents the live show um and I think we've done something really unique with it, which I'm really excited it about. It is super but, unique. Um, I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but it's very, like, I just, I've never seen a band do that. I mean, I've seen, like, I guess, like, really, you know what I mean. Yeah. Bands that got tons of money, mm-hmm. like, putting DVDs out and whatnot. But, yeah, I've never seen a band that I consider, like, a local band. Yeah. 
It's ambitious, the, right? Yeah. It's a very ambitious Yeah, we don't do anything else. You did it really well. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a, you take a really professional approach to this, obviously. Yeah. And I guess the other members of the band share that. You know, the, yep. uh, I'll, I, mm. Excuse the yeah. phrasing, but business-like. You take a very business-like approach to this. I mean, well, producing a product business, like right? a, a DVD and a, an yeah. album together, yeah. mm-hmm. you're doing that for a reason, right? You're thinking yeah. that, that could be some economic benefit doing that, doing it that way? I, I think it just, again, provides the total experience. Um, and all these mediums are so accessible now. Like a lot of music now is like, I mean, I'm still a go to the record shop and listen to stuff on vinyl and chat with the clerks and stuff. And um, that's how I experience music. But I do understand that a lot of people now mostly experience music sitting in front of their computer. Yeah. True. So yeah. why not have visuals to accompany that, that are just kind of become part of, just to enhance the yeah. experience even more. So, I mean, this is, I think the third project now that we've done that had a visual and audio component. Like our second record, um, where we are today, we did a video album. So every song had its own music video of some kind. And then that all got put together into a DVD compilation. And then we did the 1111 film, which had the Based on Truth and Lies soundtrack. And now we've done the new one as well. Um, and most of that is due to we've had we have a very st- long-standing relationship with Ryan Stevenson Price, who's a an amazing director and filmmaker, and he's really the fifth member of the band. <laughs> essentially, you know, he's put in more hours into paint, I think, than any of us have. That's amazing <laughs> you know? to have someone on your side. Yeah, like and that's really been like a four and a half, five-year that really partnership. The music and uh, and the especially live concert video. An understanding of the songs, where the breaks are, where the leads are, yeah. what you're likely to do, mm-hmm. uh, and then therefore have the camera Just in the right place. Just getting to see what he's huge. doing, it's, yeah. it sounds yeah. like it's a completely unique mm-hmm. experience to watch you guys perform live, and that's definitely different than listening to it on the computer, right? Yeah. So, so how do you move 100,000 units of that, the, oh, okay. that, that product? I wish I knew. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all, Dave? Yeah. That is wow. the million-dollar question first these days. A single sale. Uh, yeah. Why don't we listen to a song here? We have moral of the <laughs> story up, Rob. What uh, what's the story on moral of the story? What is the, the story? moral of the story? <laughs> the story of the moral of the story. It's a palindrome, in a way. Well, that's actually the title of the documentary about the making of the uh, Eleven Eleven film. Very cool. um, but yeah, moral of the story. Then I don't know. It's 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 a question. <laughs> well, I, I, like I don't that. I don't like to interject too much about what a song means because I almost feel like that can take away from what it's come to mean for totally for the audience. Yeah. And our philosophy is that once a song is recorded and it's out there, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to the audience. And we've had a number of songs that actually got relayed back to us in different ways through the audience's mm-hmm. experience of it that made it mean something new to us. So um, the audience is kind of that unspoken other member of the, <laughs> of the party yeah. as well, right? So, yeah, I mean, I... All right, well, Can't let's see what our audience that. thinks <laughs> of Moral of the Story by Paint on 102.7, Chop FM. <laughs>
more to the story by paint on 102.7 Chop FM. This is Arch Talk. We forgot to hit break after. <laughs> this is Bonfire of the Van. I come paint. here <laughs> to pull my guts to strangers who pull my drinks. It's safer. Their job is to pretend. We both knew would not last But wanted to believe in For me they're still the dream I wasn't what she wanted Now it's plain to see She has got a daughter The tumble They all change, but the photos stay the same. Don't burn them, they'll always be true. But throw our fantasies in a bonfire of vanities, the truth hurts less than blue. by paint on 102.7 Chop FM. This is Arts Talk. I'm Dave Peters. I'm Taylor Koss. And we are in conversation of Rob Johannes from paint, lead singer, songwriter, bon vivant. <laughs> um, so would you, would it, would it, would it be offensive if I said killers? Uh, I, 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 there's, oh, a, there's a killers influence there. I like yeah. that. I mm-hmm. never thought yeah. Like that. I love the killers. Yeah. That's a pretty cool mm-hmm. uh, comparison. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, I mean, they have a really a certain aesthetic about them mm-hmm. that really resonates with us. That, that sense of grandiosity. And nice, yeah. nice uh, backing vocals, too. Is that you overdubbed, or is that the other member? Yeah, the that's um, Jordan does them live. Uh, but one of the things I really look forward to, and that's what, one thing I love about studio recording, is just kind of having that open slate to just layer all these vocal harmonies and such. It's it's kind of a Freddie Mercury sort of thing. We're like, let's just throw, <laughs> you know, throw all the colors at the at the canvas, I guess, so to speak, and and, and see what sticks. Uh, it makes it more of a challenge live, but Jordan's got a really great range. Um, so he's able to to sing most of those parts as well. Nice. Um, on the live album, of course, it's it's all Jordan doing the parts again. But, um, but yeah, sure. it's kind of one of those things that I really enjoy. Um, <laughs> that I really enjoy about the studio. Kind of yours. And yeah. what's your approach? Uh, drum and bass tracks and then everybody builds on that when you're doing recording? Or do you do any live off the floor approach? Uh, 
we've done a few different approaches on on different records. Have you? Different like, producers on these. Um, Ian Smith tends to be our guy. He's our he's our our chess player. You know, our master, or our George Martin, so to speak. <laughs> um, so we've done the last couple studio efforts with him. The first album. We sort of kind of produced ourselves, but um, the original drummer's dad had turned his house into a recording studio, and that's where we rehearsed. That's him. And he engineered those sessions. Um, and the live album, we actually worked with Victoria Wicks, who's uh, one of the best front of house sound um, techs in Toronto. And she was in the process of starting this uh, sound. Uh, tech company that was made up of entirely female sound engineers. That's so cool. I was going to say, just, yeah. just hearing a female doing sound yeah. is pretty exciting. And this album was kind of the first project that they sort of took on with their name attached to it. Yeah. And being, you know, a band that's very um, open about its politics and its, you know, its feminism, uh, it just, it felt like the best thing yeah. to do. And she'd worked very closely with us doing front of house sound at our shows. And it just felt like, okay, if we're going to do a live album, Let's do it with the person who is, you know, yeah. the cream of of capturing us, you know, in the live setting, That's and awesome. um, yeah. and then send it back out is west that again to engineer. Going? Was it successful? Yeah, yeah, I mean, she's she's over not overseas, but she's doing a cruise ship thing right now, where she's doing sound for these rock shows on cruise ships in awesome. Alaska and stuff. So she'll be back very soon, actually. Cool. I think she's That's back awesome. this week, Victoria. So you and I are gonna go and catch up. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, so that's it's a very very exciting thing. We kept it all really in the family this time, but like the first album, what we did is we, we tried this thing where we would really focus on getting the drums, but we would all be in the room playing together. Uh, and the instruments would just kind of be going direct into the board. Like ghost tracks, you guys are all doing like your bed tracks or ghost tracks, and the drums is what really matters. Yeah, the yeah. drums are what we're actually recording, yeah. but everything is plugged in and everyone is playing together. Yeah. Uh, so that's Wait how for the drummer to. I've had experience doing that, yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Seems the the well, it just has that live energy to yeah. it, well, you know, exactly. because you're yeah. used to playing together. So it's kind of odd when you're not that way. It's so um, weird. The second record, where we are today, we did s- kind of similar. I think Ian had me come to his house and. Uh, I recorded some just scratch guitar with the vocals, and then then we went to the drums from there and then built everything on top of that. And I th- the last EP, which these songs are being played from, because we didn't have the live album <laughs> with us. No, no, it's okay. Uh, we, d- we did a similar thing where I, I think we did the drums and bass together. Um, but I also... Yeah, no, I think I actually recorded a quick rough rhythm guitar and a scratch vocal to a click track and then that's what everyone played to so it's kind of like we're still playing together um but doing the live album was was an absolute pleasure i almost as much as i love the studio i almost want to do another live mm. album again after this one yeah, uh, it's, like it's, it was just very exciting you know to to, to, to capture it in the moment unprecedented <laughs> yeah that's true well we'd have we'd have to one up what, what we did though because we we yes, did the concert true. film with this one so you know How like, do you every that? project we do has to go one above what the previous one did so to put out you know a 75 minute live album of mostly unreleased material uh that's debuting itself recorded live on an album for the first time uh and then also comes with a concert film and a documentary. <laughs> you know, where, where are we going to go from here? Where are we going to go from here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll see. Who knows? This might be the last thing we do because we can't top ourselves this no, time. No, I hope not. We hope not. <laughs> You're at Arts Talk. I mean, it, it, what it is, it's a, it presumes a certain amount of success. Do you think of Pain as successful right now? Ah, it depends on what kind of a mood I'm in. <laughs> and success is, a, is yeah. measured in different ways. It definitely well, is. And, and that's the challenge. And um, I mean, to interject like something slightly serious onto this, I mean, the measure of success for me was so tied up with how I grew up and, and having pressure and, and, you know, violent consequences to not succeeding and all these sorts of things and it's sort of like i mean that for me led down a very dangerous road of substance use and mental health breakdowns and then then i actually had to go through treatment and and come through all that but the band really came together as a family almost Mm -hmm. through that process so we kind of have had to dispense with certain understandings of what we consider success to be um yeah, it's not always about money. It's not always about uh, putting your day job and living off your money. There's a certain success, right? And well, there's there's something about 
still being a member of a community and a regular person, you know, that, that also creates art. There's a certain authenticity there that's for sure that you kind of lose touch with sometimes if you're, if you're removed from that universe. But for me, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's challenging. We have the general response to paint is why aren't you guys huge yet? <laughs> Which a lot of people are like, wow, that's awesome. But for me, I'm like, Oh, like, why aren't we? So it yeah. gets really frustrating. Yeah. Um, so it's it's all how you look at it, I guess, yeah. in terms well, of success. Well, uh, <laughs> we wish you nothing but luck and success. It's been Thank a you. real pleasure talking to you. The, you the too. tunes are terrific. Mm -hmm. uh, we sure. are flat out of time. For our uh, listeners, though, how can they, if they want to find you online, mm -hmm. how can they find you? Paintband.com. All right. That's the central hub for and everything. And I assume YouTube's got quite a bit of video content. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We have that's a 16 music to. videos right, so, and a bunch yeah. of documentaries and lots of stuff there. So that's paint fantastic. Band. And uh, mm -hmm. they can catch you Saturday night at the Fox Lounge in Barrie. Yes. Uh, or, any, other, any other local shows? Uh, we are doing October 22nd in London with Rubella. Rubella. <laughs> Taylor Cos. And then we're off to Ottawa, Montreal, Prince Edward County, do another show in Toronto, so we're we're around. But yeah, if you check out the website, paintband.com, all the dates are there. Paintband.com. Got it. Yeah. Our right sincere on. thanks to Rob Johannes of Paint Thank for you. Being Thank here. you. It was terrific. Appreciate Don't forget it. to tune in next week at six o'clock for another edition of Art Talk with the Reddies. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Punk rock. We'll nice. see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Like you hit and run if it's time